Without good art, life would not be worth living. Without bad art, life would be worth living. There's a reason that I use that um, quote by myself. I made that quote uh, at the beginning of every video because it kind of sums up my beliefs and where I'm at, what I'm all about. That's me in that picture in, uh, when I was living in downtown Toronto. I'm still downtown, but yeah, so that picture's like 10 years ago. Oh, and that's Casey's tampon. Okay, the underground artist, the inspired human. I think uh, it's important to, uh, for artists to be inspired. It can be very daunting being an artist. And I'm talking about a real artist, not some, you know, Kevin Feige, Marvel Comics hack shill. They're all shills. If you work for Disney, you're not an artist. See, I was talking to this teenage girl who um, is an aspiring artist, or already an artist if she does art. And, um, you know, it, it's very, very difficult in this day and age. Well, it's almost impossible to make a living as an artist. However, if you're an artist, you're in good company. Uh, when Bach was dying, they already hired his replacement. That's how little he was valued in his life. When Beethoven was 41, he was totally un... Um, valued and undiscovered um some say he was suicidal he smelled of booze and piss and he was disheveled he was like um an ugly ugly uh sight to see in a bar the guy the kind of guy that you everybody's just like Ooh, stay away from him towards the end of his life edgar Allan poe would show up hammered to job interviews and stumble around um you know hammered like a freak and this is the, the best, the guy who's got the greatest command of the English language, going around hammered, st stumbling, and uh, not even able to make a sentence to, without, you know, without, uh, you know, what people do when they're drunk. Slurring his speech. On his deathbed, Kafka wanted all of his writing to be destroyed. That was his dying wish. His wife, his sister did not respect that, and that's why we know, have his writing today. I'm starting to think that was a pretty smart idea, though, to have your writing destroyed. Because look how Disney uh, rapes all the uh, art from the artists. Takes all the money, makes all this money off, like, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens probably didn't make the equivalent of 100 bucks on his book. But Disney's made raking in millions. The Little Mermaid. All these stories that the artists made. Disney's just cashing in on it. And not just cashing in on it, but twisting it around. Changing the story. Um... Pretty soon, I, I'm I'm convinced. Make uh, Charles Dickens a female, Charle Charlize Dickens. Change history while we're at it, right? Like the Little Mermaid is not a Disney movie; it's a Hans Christian Andersen story. I highly encourage anyone to watch um, the Mindscape of Alan Moore. Uh, the guy's a super genius, and he every, all of his beliefs are completely. I, I, I'm in complete agreement with them. Um, and I'll get into this. But uh, this video here that I'm making is for any artist who wants some inspiration. Because you need it. It can be very daunting. Especially in this day and age when Disney movies are the only thing that makes money. And it's the only way that you can be a writer or, or an artist. Is if you sell out and work for Disney and make that bullshit. This is a painting by a good friend of mine, Jennifer Humphreys. Who paints about has been painting 12 hours a day for the last at least 20 years. She has not sold out. Um, she's undiscovered, and that's fine. She's okay with it. She's not going to make uh, Disney movies. She's not going to paint art for Disney movies. This is Marvel Studios, which I might say is the absolute opposite of art. It's like bad art. Um, it's what is the worst thing on the planet, I might argue. Um, they hire artists to do um, shitty art. Um <laughs> Uh, they take stories that were already written and they rewrite them. So that's already making it, you know, one step below the original writer. They get a director who uh, directs it and they get actors who, and they're all paid a, a lot of money, but they make even more money for the corporation that they work for. So they're basically pimping themselves out, whoring themselves to Disney so that Disney can make a billion dollars. And then Disney will use that money to force other artists out right you're not allowed to have your movie in a theater if marvel if disney's got a movie in there and again how is an artist supposed to compete with marvel studios how is a how's a comedian supposed to compete with the simpsons when they've got 20 art 20 writers making jokes you can't compete so they're they're trying to drive everybody out 
As Alan Moore said, artists have allowed themselves to be sold down the river. They're better than that. You're better than a Marvel movie. You don't need to, to do that. This is McDonald's. They, they pay artists, wannabe artists, to write their jingles, right? So you, you studied music and you wanted to write music and you end up writing the song for a McDonald's commercial. You wanted to be a writer and you end up writing a commercial for McDonald's. You wanted to paint paintings and you end up designing the logos for, for McDonald's. That's basically how you're going to make money as an artist. I know this guy who was a great guitarist, very respected, and he hated Lady Gaga. Well, guess what? He ended up playing for Lady Gaga. So I saw him. It was weird. I saw, I'd see him on Oprah. I saw him on Saturday Night Live. I saw him on like everything. And he's dressed up in the clothes that Lady Gaga wants him to wear, playing the songs that she wants him to play, music that he doesn't like. So why? Why even bother being a guitarist if that's what you're going to do? And yeah, you made a lot of money doing it, but that's what you want to do? So it is my opinion that an artist should just have a regular job, like a janitor or something. Do that for eight hours a day, and then you can go home and do your art, exactly the art that you want to do for eight hours a day. And that's basically how you can be an artist in this day and age. And it should be irrelevant whether you get recognition. I know another guy who made a ton of money writing for, I think, that show Queer as Folk. And he said uh, it was incredible money and he bought a house out of it. But he goes, it was the most awful, horrible job in the world. All we did is sit in a room all day thinking of catchphrases. It was like the most soulless thing. I know another guy who makes a living as a writer for movies, screenwriter. But guess what he does? He writes these screenplays and then he uh, he gets them optioned, right? Which means that he gets $1,000 or $5,000 a year for that screenplay. And it's like, whether we make it or not, we're just optioning it. So we're, we're considering it. But that means that during this time, you can't market it to anyone else. We basically own it for a year, whether we make it or not. So essentially, he writes screenplays that are st bought and kept in a closet for five years. And is that why you became a writer? To, to write shit that, that is not allowed to be uh, made? Or he had a screenplay that he called The Mexican. That was the title. And then he, had, he got it optioned, and then they said, we want you to rewrite it and call it the American instead of the, Me the Mexican. And he's like, yeah, but the, the whole point is that it's the Mexican. So they want to change it to the point where it doesn't even resemble, like it's a Frankenstein monster compared to what you originally intended. It's a disgrace. It's perverted and twisted. And is that why you became a writer? This is one of my favorite quotes. A multitude of causes unknown to former times are now acting with a combined force to blunt the discriminating powers of the mind and unfitting it for all voluntary exertion to reduce it to a state of almost savage torpor. So I looked up the word torpor because it's not the most commonly used word. And I believe it means something like indifference. So savage indifference. And that's what we get. That's what we get with like art today, music. I mean, that's, that's hip hop music in a, in a nutshell, right? Savage indifference. Yeah, I'm a pimp and I'm a badass. It's that's not what art is supposed to be. It's supposed to be vul uh, vulnerability, not not bragging and putting up your guard and showing how tough you are or how insensitive you are. That's what savage indifference. It's disgusting. It's like passive aggressiveness. I'm proud that I don't care, and you get a lot of that out there. I mean, Michael Bay movies. That's savage indifference. This is a guy who's proud that he's a moron. Um. Philistine is another good word. Philistines are uh, basically people that just live for sex and gluttony. They're like pigs, right? And that's kind of like what Michael Bay is, right? Just all he cares about is women and money and nice cars and explosions. Just like a real piece of garbage. Another great one is dilettantes. Those are people who don't actually get good at anything, but they get kind of good at everything. But they, So they don't actually have any skills that they hone. See, I think an artist is very much a perfectionist. I have anxiety, and I was like, somebody asked me once, why do you have anxiety? And I go, I think it's because I need everything to be perfect. And then I read a quote by T.S. Eliot where he said, anxiety is the handmaiden of creativity. So an artist needs to want something to, be, to make something perfect. They're idealists at heart. And someone like Michael Bay is the opposite of an artist because he's not an idealist. He's like, that'll do. Who gives a shit? Let's just get some tits and ass in our movie. 
Okay. I've only read one book by um, Kurt Vonnegut. It was called Breakfast Breakfast for Champions. I think Bruce Willis starred in some shitty, abysmal movie about it, based on it. But the only thing I really remember about that book, I didn't like it very much, was that uh, a writer at the very beginning, like an old, like 60-year-old writer, um, some whatever they awards place wants to give him an award. And he's like utterly insulted. He's like, Oh God, I've been poor my whole life. And now you're giving me an award. F you. And it's so true. Like imagine for 60 years you go unnoticed and then they're going to give you some stupid ass award. I think they did that with Tesla, right? Tesla who worked his whole life to give all this, these gifts to humanity to make life easier, change the world. Uh, Thomas Edison made tons of money off of him, treated him like a slave. And then at the end, the company that stole all his ideas wanted to give him an award. <laughs> so I've been going through a bit of a depression over this Star Wars bullshit. I thought it would be funnier, but it's depressing. So that's fine, though. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll kill themselves watching Star Wars, shoot themselves in the head. And then, you know what? We'll, we'll do other things. We can We can go to other artists, you know. That's wonderful that Star Wars is taking itself out of the race because there's so many great uh, artists out there that deserve to have their shit viewed, like myself. Now, the thing that really sucks about being an artist, a real artist, when I say artist, I don't mean like uh, a guy that makes Marvel movies, is that you are constantly being pressured to not be an artist. You're constantly forced to hear like Beyonce songs, like say you're in a taxi cab or you're walking down the street and they're playing it in a store. You are barraged, you are attacked with movie ads, um, basically telling you that what you're doing is not good or it's not valued. And this is what's valued, this shit, this hip hop and Beyonce and, you know, and McDonald's uh, jingles. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. And what you're doing as an artist is worthless, right? There's a great poem by Arthur O'Shaughnessy called Ode. And it starts, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. It was quoted in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But it's basically about how the artists are the ones that create the empires and um, do everything. The whole world is created by artists. And I think artists should have more respect for themselves in that regard. And even if you're not discovered in your lifetime, it doesn't matter. And I'll explain why very soon. All right. Well, let's put it this way. Somebody who does not create art is always compromising, is never inspired, inspires no one around them, and um, is generally like has a big void in their soul. Whereas someone who does create art, like myself, is always inspired, is always happy even, and inspires others around them. I can't tell you how many people have told me that I inspire them. Um, I'm, and so even if my art is never appreciated by anyone, I appreciate it, and it makes me happy, and it makes me a pleasure to be around. Um, and this is quality over quantity. Um, I don't sell a million copies of my books. I, I sold maybe 200 or 300. But the people who read them have said, I mean, people who don't, don't really need to compliment me, people who I don't even know have said, that that's like amazing, that was amazing. Um, and, you know, I'd rather inspire one person uh, than be Britney Spears, sell a million albums that inspired nothing, inspired little girls to dress like sluts or something. Like, that's not, that's not a effect. That's not good. You know, or Snoop Dogg inventing the word fascizzle, right? Oh, I changed culture because everybody says fascizzle. But that's not, that's not that good. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> How does that help? And, you know, I've never thought about this, but like, everybody knows what Elvis Presley looks like. Everybody knows he's the king. But most people, especially the new generations, probably don't know one song by him. Nobody listens to him. Everybody knows what Marilyn Monroe looks like, but can you name a movie she was in? Most people can't, especially the newer generations. And if you were concentrating, if an artist had to concentrate on how popular they were, they would, nobody would be an artist. Now that Banksy guy, he is not an artist. He's a social commentator. That's all he does. He doesn't have a craft. He doesn't have skills. You know, like, what, what's his skill? Stenciling? No. So he's not an artist. He's a social commentator. So was Andy Warhol, I suppose. Um, I'm going to make a horror movie. Um, and I told my friend, we're going to make this fucking horror movie for no money, just as an experiment to see if we plug in all the tropes, all the little things that horror movies do, if we can get a million views. Because I think horror movies are so accessible and people will watch them no matter what. 
But that's not art. That's an experiment. I'm going to advertise my uh, art while I'm here. Um, this is a short, uh, vi- short film I made, The End of the Rainbow. It's on my channel. I think there's a folder called Great Art. Uh, it's pretty brilliant. The only problem is that I, I did the narration and I sound way too cynical, almost like a sick pervert or something. I would like to redo the, um, my audio for that. Otherwise, it's a masterpiece. Um, and you know, what's it like being an underground artist? It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, I, I, I enjoy being an under, underground artist. Uh, it's the coolest thing you could be, especially in this day and age. Uh, it inspires everybody. Everybody's like, holy shit, that's amazing. <laughs> and not working for Disney, not doing bullshit. I'm sorry, Guardians of the Galaxy is a shit movie. It's not even even for movie standards. So The End of the Rainbow is about a, a father who wants to keep his daughter, protect her from darkness by keeping her in the dark. That's the idea, that like she, he protects her from any negative knowledge of the world, anything bad in the world, he protects her from it, but she ends up being ignorant as a result, and that seals her fate in a way. This was my first book, uh, Men Are All Murderers and Women Are All Horrors. Oh, by the way, Human Warnings is a pretty cool pseudonym for me because... I write satires, and what are satires other than human warnings? I didn't even plan it that way, but it works out very nicely. And you know, this book is especially useful in today's climate because, uh, you know, of what's going on. And uh, it's basically a, a book about what the world would be like if stereotypes were put into action and men were all murderers and women were all whores. It's a cautionary tale. It's a human warning. Why Can't I Be Normal is my second book, which I wrote when I was like 31, wrote it in a year, and um, it's I'm 42 now, and it's the one that people like the most because it's so easy to relate to. It's about a guy who wants to be normal so badly that he becomes increasingly weird. I made an audio book of it, and it's on my uh, YouTube, but Men Are All Murderers and Women Are All Whores and Why Can't I Be Normal were both published. I made 100, self-published. So I still have co- a few copies left. I made a thousand of each. Gave a lot of them away at book expos in New York and in Toronto. And sold a, a large number of them as well. I'd say I made my money back anyways. You know, I gave it to one girl, Trish Doan. She died, unfortunately. She was in a band called Kitty. And uh, she was pretty big. But uh, she was like, yeah, this should be made into a movie. She loved it. I actually, like, whatever, ten years ago, I mailed a copy of these two books to a, an agent, a movie agent in Toronto. And she wrote back and she goes, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know. This isn't really my thing. And then two months later, her husband calls me and he goes, can I interview you? He goes, uh, yeah, my wife got sick and I read her your books while she was sick and we loved them. And he goes, and this is one of the best compliments I ever got. He goes, 20 years ago when people are talking about the art scene in Toronto, 20 years from now, they're going to be talking about you when they talk about the art scene in Toronto in the early 2000s. There's actually, his interview is on YouTube. It's called like Open Book. Justin Zaza is my name. Z-A-Z-A is the last name. Death the Movie is a play that I wrote, which was performed at the Fringe Festival like seven years ago. And of course, nobody came, which is fine. But I think it's the best thing I've ever written. Um, It's about a director who wants to make a movie where the main character dies in it. And the actor actually starts dying because he's dealing with the morbid subject matter. And... The director doesn't realize that the actor is actually dying, and he thinks that he's acting. And then he dies. Oh, and we filmed it, and it's on um, my YouTube channel. It's it's not the sound isn't the greatest because we're just filming the the play, but ah, it's a masterpiece. Like, holy shit! If I ever get well known, this thing's gonna skyrocket. It's only half an hour long though. The most famous celebrity of all time is a feature film I made. It's about an hour. It was supposed to be 100 minutes, but the main actor kept getting his hair cut, so it made it a big problem. Um, But, uh, yeah, the story of 64 exclamation points. It's all about people talking about the greatest celebrity who ever lived, uh, but none of them have met him, including his mother and his wife, so he's like, does he even... He doesn't even really exist. That's the conceit. It's just a series of interviews. That's why I made it a movie, because it would be so easy. So it looks like high quality production value because it's all in one. There's no backgrounds and um, made it for a few thousand bucks, made it in a year and it was done. 
I'll probably post these things again in YouTube, on YouTube anyway, so people watch. The color black took a long time. I finished it earlier this year, and um, it's about a world where uh, black is the only color, and it's the root of all evil. I made an audio book of it, and it's on YouTube. However, I don't think I'm a very good reader. I think I kind of ruined it, ruined the book by reading it out loud. I hate reading my own shit. I hate it. My new book is called uh, When I Go to Hell, and I think it's going to be a masterpiece. Uh, when I get started on these things, I, I'm just so positive that they're going to be the most profound, amazing things ever, and then they end up being even better than that. Uh, so it's a wonderful life. And I'm going to make a horror movie soon. Uh, a really shitty horror movie and see if it gets a million views just because people will watch anything if it's horror. Now, what I was hoping to do with YouTube is to get enough followers that I can get them to um, support me on Patreon so that I could print my books because it does cost money. It costs a few thousand dollars to print, you know, a thousand copies. And, you know, I'd give the copies to the people that paid for them, you know, that invested. Uh, I'm not interested in making money. I'm just interested in getting my book out there. So yeah, Patreon, uh, Human Warnings on Patreon, give me money. I deserve it more than anybody. And uh, otherwise, I'll just put this shit on YouTube. The when I go to hell, I might make that into like a graphic novel and just put it on YouTube. I'm not interested in making money. I don't believe in money. In fact, I believe that money is bad. I believe in eliminating money. Anyways, in many ways, it's a uh, wonderful time to be an artist. You don't need anything. You can do it all on your computer. You can make a movie with your cell phone. You can make music without any, you know, software, barely. We have access to all the paintings and music and education all on our internet. It's, you don't even have to leave your house and you can get everything. And you can you can cause a revolution just from your home with a computer and a little bit of, uh, you know, knowledge. So it's a great time to be alive. It's not a great time to be alive if you want to be rich. But then again, it is because you just sell out. So you can get anything you want. Um, and being an artist is amazing. And I wanted to touch on one thing. Oh, I think I already touched on it, but uh, I inspire everybody around me, like because I'm inspired. Because by create by being an artist, you 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 feed your soul, and you've got a rich soul, and it it you you fucking have a, like practically an aura around you of happiness so you know i might not have sell a billion copies like britney spears but the people around me are inspired constantly so it's a good life oh and if anybody can tell me uh, a good free editing program that'd be great because i'm using avs video editor and it's impossible it takes 10 times longer than it should take because it's just such a shitty program um, it's just awful. So I'm sure there's a good... I, I, if I could find a better editing program, I'd be able to make videos that looked way better and everything. And bet better, much better edited, etc. Okay, have a nice day, everybody. I love you all so much. If you like gays, click like. If you like blacks, comment. If you like women, click notification bell. If you like gay women, subscribe. And if you like gay black women, uh, Patreon, Human Warnings, give me money. Oh, also in my early 20s, I wrote eight string quartets. Uh, no, no, like 12 string quartets, eight Baroque-styled concertos, violin concertos. And for the last 10 years, I've been studying counterpoint. I hope to uh, start writing music again one day, but this time it would be perfect. The The earlier music in my early 20s is very flawed but still very good it's on soundcloud under human warnings